After the successful nuclear detonations on top of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the Soviet Union was slow to react and focus its resources on nuclear research. However, thanks to successful espionage activities, the Soviets eventually got up to speed, and by 1949, they detonated their first warhead. Joseph Stalin was delighted. Despite the successful feat, the Soviet scientists continued working hard at developing a more powerful and less resource-consuming atomic bomb. The result of this meticulous research paid off in October of 1951, when the Soviet Union was finally able to detonate its first nuclear bomb made up of 75% uranium and 25% plutonium. It was dubbed RDS-3 Mariah, and the impressive scale of devastation it left behind can be seen in footage taken straight from Ground Zero. The Soviet Atomic Bomb Project When World War II ended, Joseph Stalin realized it had been a mistake not to focus on the development of atomic power or establish a special bureau. Still, the infiltration of communist sympathizers into the British and American top-secret projects paid off during the war. Spies from Project Manhattan managed to get the first footprints of the atomic bomb and other critical data required to accelerate the process of building their own. With the creation of the Soviet Atomic Bomb Project, Stalin ordered hundreds of Soviet and captured German scientists to begin developing an atomic bomb that was more powerful than those used against Japan to end the war. Then, on August 29, 1949, the Soviets conducted their first atomic bomb test, codenamed First Lightning. The bomb greatly resembled the Fat Man and was entirely composed of plutonium, using a TNT and hexagon implosion lens design. The second Soviet nuclear detonation took place on September 24, 1951. RDS-2 was a 38.3 kiloton device based on a tritium-uranium implosion design with a levitated core. Although the test was successful, the Soviet Union lacked plutonium and quickly began to look for additional reactive chemical elements that could help develop hundreds of bombs with the same devastating effect. The alternative was the RDS-3 atomic bomb. RDS-3 Atomic Bomb RDS-3, or Mariah, as the bomb was codenamed, was quite different from the previous models of the Soviet nuclear warhead. It had a different combined core filling that was made up of 75% uranium and 25% plutonium. In contrast, RDS-2 was 100% plutonium. This combination allowed Soviet scientists to save the scarce plutonium the USSR had at its disposal and increase the number of nuclear bombs that could be produced in such quantities. Mariah had a 42 kiloton capacity. Like its predecessors, it was an atomic bomb of intensified fission of implosion type, which comprised a nuclear levitating charge of plutonium-239 and a shell of uranium-235. The improvements in the design were based on data gathered from the tests of RDS-1 and RDS-2, which had different compositions. The pump employed by RDS-3 Mariah was also developed at Arzama-16, a closed city located some 450 kilometers away from Moscow, where the secret nuclear facility was located. At first, many scientists working on the bomb, such as Y. Zeldovich and Yuri Kariton, were skeptical about the idea of the combined filling for Mariah and opposed the use of uranium. They claimed that the uranium's critical mass was much higher than that of plutonium and could lead to an incomplete blast that would not provoke a chain reaction of fission. Nevertheless, other men like Frank Kamenetsky and E. Zababakin had proven through theoretical calculations that the new bomb's design composition created the ideal conditions for the chain reaction desired by Zeldovich and Karaton. Once this problem was solved, another one arose. How would Mariah be tested? The scientists were divided. Some believed that the bomb should be tested by dropping it from an aircraft. Others considered that it was best to test it on a tower, like they had done back in 1949, in order to gather more intelligence regarding its power and the chain reaction. In the end, it was Ivy Kuchetov, one of the heads of the Soviet atomic project, who decided that the bomb would be dropped from an aircraft. Consequently, the directorate decided that the nuclear combat test would be carried out by a Tupolev Tu-4 aircraft.
Mariah goes boom. It was October 18th, 1951, perhaps the most important day for the Soviet Union, going back to the victory over the Nazis during the Great Patriotic War of 1945. The top brass of the Soviet military forces and the most influential scientists gathered at the Semipolitinsk test site in Kazakhstan to witness the extraordinary event that was about to unravel before their eyes. The USSR was preparing to discharge its third atomic bomb of the RDS variant. Some of the captured German scientists from the V-2 rocket program of World War II were still around to see what the Reich could have achieved. Still, a gleam of hope could be seen in their eyes, as if their decades of research were finally paying off. However, Comrade Joseph Stalin, who was no longer the passionate leader who had ruled his people with an iron grip, was not that optimistic. He was now a sick man, and wanted to prevail over the Americans one way or another as the Korean War raged on between the soldiers of the United Nations, the North Koreans, and the Communist Chinese. Nevertheless, this third nuclear bomb, the improved RDS-3, would be the ultimate display of power that the USSR could muster against its Western enemy. Footage taken at the Semipatolinsk test site shows how the Tupolev Tu-4 aircraft approached the runway close to the camera prior to taking off. The Russian narrator explains that the program called for the RDS-3 device to be dropped from an aircraft instead of being detonated above a tower. As the Tu-4 flies over, its remarkable resemblance to the American B-29 Superfortress is immediately noticed. With its four-bladed B-3 propellers and its four Shvetsov ASH-73 TK air-cooled radial piston engines, the Tu-4 was capable of taking off with a maximum weight of 63,600 kilograms making it one of the ideal strategic bombers of the USSR and the best one to carry out this nuclear test. The footage then cuts to ground zero of the test site, which shows a specially arranged circle measuring 400 meters in diameter. Although there are no shots of the aircraft dropping the bomb, Mariah was dropped from 10 kilometers and detonated some 380 meters above the ground. The bomb provided an explosive power of 42 kilotons of TNT, and the footage shows the exact moment it detonates. Following the chain reaction, Ground Zero is lit up by the detonation above the ground. Immediately, the ground shakes and sends waves of debris across the area. The mushroom cloud appears moments later, followed by a rapid expansion of the bomb's detonation. The resulting flash could be seen from 170 kilometers away. Before the footage ends, the narrator explains that it was filmed from an instrumental tower along a southeast blast line, located about 7.5 kilometers away from Ground Zero. When the Americans heard about the successful nuclear detonation, they nicknamed it Joe 3 RDS-3 would be the first mass-produced nuclear weapon of the Soviet Union, and was assigned to long-range aviation in 1953, mere months before the war in Korea ended. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below what you think of the Soviet atomic bomb project and the results it yielded. Also hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos, and stay tuned.